Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you asking for your blessing as we are gathered here today. We pray for guidance in the matters at hand and ask that you would clearly show us how to conduct ourselves with a spirit of joy and enthusiasm. We ask that you open the minds of everyone here so that they may clearly receive the information presented. We pray that you continue to guide us through this day safely. In your name we pray, amen. I welcome you to this wonderful opportunity for you as young people to be able to take part as well as voice your opinions on a very, very important topic. Sexual, uh, not sexual abuse, child abuse, I'm sorry. Voice of Our Children just said, and I have seen them grow in the five years that they have put on this panel discussion. They are the voice of you, children. And there are many other youth organizations that come together to promote the youth. What are you doing for yourself? That's a question I want you to think about. Because in this day and age, I believe you as young people, you're much more aware of what's going on than I think we were at your age. And I believe you should have a say in what goes on as we try to put together programs, etc., to protect you, but also to promote you, educate you, and the like. So I hope you make use of this opportunity. You've been chosen by your schools. I see so many schools here this morning, and I'd like to each school to get the appreciation also of all the other schools. So I'll start on the left, the Milton Peters College. Welcome, give them a big round of applause. The St. Dominic High School, welcome. The Charlotte Brookson Academy, welcome. Those are the three uniforms I recognize. Are there any other schools right now present? Okay, so we welcomed all the schools that are here. I'm very happy that you were able to take up this opportunity. The rights of children are being promoted across St. Martin on both sides for the longest while. And I'm hoping that you have, at some point in your school careers, received a booklet with what these rights are. Because I know that government has produced them, has shared them out in the school over the years, and you as young people should know what your rights are. But along with rights comes another word beginning with R, responsibilities. And many think because we have a right, that means we can do whatever we want. That is not the case. Even adults cannot do whatever they want, wherever they want, however they want. So with rights come responsibilities. And I have always promoted a four-letter acronym that spells out R-I-C-E. And these four letters set the tone of following the rules of life as far as I'm concerned. And I would like to share it with you today. The R spells or represents respect. Repeat. Respect. respect for yourself, first of all, and respect for others. And that would include everyone, regardless of age, gender, or you know, completely different from whomever you think you are. Respect should be the number one thing that we uphold in our lives. Impulse control, the I. Repeat, impulse control. Impulse control. impulse control means controlling that feeling or need to say sometimes something we know is not appropriate at that time and that place. So it's basically doing the right thing at the right time, in the right place, for the right reasons. Can we all agree on that? So that already, you know, as you all are mostly teenagers by now, you've had some experience, you know basically what is right and what is wrong. So, controlling the impulse. So that means controlling the impulse to laugh at inappropriate times. Uh, controlling the, impoint, the impulse to just shout out and say things that are inappropriate. This does not mean you do not speak out. It means you think before you speak. C, compassion. compassion. Compassion is not the same as love. Though we would all 
like to say love everyone, not everyone is so easy to love, right or wrong? But you, based on your own respect for yourself and respecting that person for their differences, you don't know what side of the bed they stepped out on this morning. Take that into consideration and have come passion. Try to put yourself in the shoes of another person, especially when they are acting inappropriately. And this can be an adult as compared to you, a young person today. So we have had R, who remembers? I and C. Now the last one, E, is equity. Who knows that word? Equity. I usually have to explain that word. I had to look it up myself because when you hear equity, the root of the word sounds like equal, right? So you're saying treat me equally. You think that's what it means? Not exactly. There's equal and there's equity. Um, I always give the example of a parent like myself who has two children of different age groups, 10 years apart. So when my son was two and my daughter was 12, do they eat the same amount of food? Do I give them equal portions of food? No. Do they have equal bedtimes? Do they get equal amounts of attention? <laughs> okay, so based on what I'm hearing, some of you think you still need equal attention. Actually, a two-year-old would require, need, much more attention. And by the time you hit 12, you actually want your mom to leave you alone, don't you? So, based on that comparison, giving everyone what they deserve, what they need, that's equity. Do you understand the difference now? Who would like to be treated with respect? Wow, only a few hands? We should have the yes, no, oh, see, I like that. <laughs> Who would like to be able to control their impulses and have others control their impulses towards them? Who would like someone to have compassion on them? Not every day you wake up feeling the same, right? Sometimes you just ain't able, right? You go to school, you have a headache, teacher expects you to hold up. You want teacher to have compassion on you? Right. Who would like to be treated equitably? Get what they deserve, the time they deserve, the attention they deserve. We all do. So you agree with me that these four words can cover the gamut and cover almost every other rule you've ever heard in your life? You don't agree with me? So you agree with me? Good. So I would like you, and I would like to encourage you to practice R-I-C-E. Rice. We can spell. Yes, rice. And sometimes when we are in the middle of a session, you know, as teachers, you get a little heated and you start to talk a little too loud, I would have students saying, rice, and then one time. And then sometimes they make a joke, not fry rice, teacher. Rice and peas, you know, that kind of thing. So we can have fun with it. But the aim of it is to remember in your communication with others to be respectful, control yourselves, have compassion and equity. On today's topic, how does that even relate? Child abuse. Are you being respected if you are being abused? No. Is that person exercising any type of impulse control? No. Is that person exercising any type of compassion towards you? No. no. Is that person treating you equitably? No. Definitely not. So anybody that abuses a child definitely isn't exercising rice. So if you start practicing rice from now, you definitely won't grow up to be a child abuser. All of these things we have to look at. If you have experienced child abuse, I would expect you would never abuse your child or anyone else's child. So as we get into the discussion today, I hope that the discussions will be fruitful and thought-provoking. Sometimes something we didn't even consider as abuse is actually abuse. Talking down to children is something that is 
really perceived, I think, by children as abuse, but the adults don't even realize that we are doing it. So today, I would like to say to you, if someone is even in the most subtle way, just basically by talking down to you or disregarding your opinion, exercising some type of abuse on you, because it's not always physical, eh? respectfully and with compassion for where they are sitting, exercise your voice, your right to speak out and explain to them that you do not agree and why. And I'm sure they will be more open in the future to treat you in a more respectful manner. So have a wonderful panel discussion here today to the presenters. Much success in bringing forth the information to the youth so that they can ask pertinent questions. And I hope you leave from here with enough knowledge and power to spread the news to all your other classmates. Have a wonderful panel discussion. Congratulations, Voice of Our Children. The department I work at, the Civil Registry, it has the responsibility of registering a, a wide range of information that pertains to a person's entire life so that the status of that person could be correctly verified. We like to say from womb to the tomb or from birth until the day you die and everything that takes place in between, including if you got acknowledged, if you got married, if you got divorced, etc., etc., we register it in the office. Now, as a government department, we have to work in accordance with our civil code as to what to register, how to register it, and under which circumstances. Our civil codes, oh, first of all, let me say this. Um, my little speech is, is called the rights of the child to protection. Each and every child has the right to be protected in this society. Our civil code states, a minor is a person that has not yet reached the age of 18. There are only basically two exceptions to this. That is someone that was married, let's say someone that is 17 years old got married, that person is considered an adult. Or someone that has been declared by a judge to be an adult that is below the age of 18. Minors are also under authority. There are two types of authority. You have the parental authority, which is um, under uh, the authority of the natural parents of the child. If they're married, the mother and father, they are, have the, the parental authority of the child. Or if things go wrongly and then someone else is appointed as a guardian of that child, which is someone that is not the biological parent of the child. That is also possible. But the law makes sure that someone at any given point in time is in charge of that child. Now, That is really the beginning of the foundation of having a protection set up for the children. The parental guide, or I say, but um, the term I used again was some, or the person that is appointed as the guardian. Because they are in charge of that child, they look for, they look for the child's best interest and they represent the child in, um, in different circumstances so that that child is not taken advantage of. Now, of course, someone that is a minor is not allowed to be <laughs> in authority of another minor. Also, someone that is uh, themselves that has to be put under special guardianship because they are especially if they are mentally incapable, they could not, they cannot be the guardian of a, of a minor. But all of that is to make sure that the minor child have proper protection. Now the parental 
authority includes the duty and the rights of the parents to care for the minor child and to educate that child. Now the care and the education also is to be understood that it has to do with the concern and the responsibility for the spiritual and physical welfare of the child and to promote the development of his or her personality. That is within the law. A child does not raise themselves. A parent has that right and that responsibility to raise that child up in such a way that that child could be a functioning part in this society. Even we as registrars, when we are performing marriages, we let that couple know right, that one of their responsibility now as husband and wife, that any child that they get within that marriage, they have the responsibility by law to properly raise up that child. And all of that has to do with the protection of the child to make sure that that child has a good future. That child will know how to conduct itself um, as it grows up and takes his or her rightful place in society. Now, in our office, as I say, we register any, sorry? Okay, let me get back, let me kind of get back my trailer thought here. <laughs> okay, our office, as I said before, we register any changes or updates that, is, that takes place within a person's life. So even when it comes to, um, at the time of birth, the, the child already has established who its parents are, that we're referring to the biological parents. Um, if for whatever reason, Let's say, for instance, the biological parents are not properly raising the child. They are taking advantage of the child in different ways, um, neglecting the child. Okay, then the court of guardianship or the judge they can step in and have someone um, or remove the parental rights of the parents, and then have someone be put in guardianship of that child. That is possible. And once that is done, we as a department, we get the declaration from the judge or whether we get it from the court of guardianship and we make sure that that information is added to that child's information in, within our system, which is something that is very important because um, in protecting the child, if the, if the parental right is moved for the parents, um, we have to make sure we have to make sure that a parent does not get things that they do not have the right to as pertaining to that child. All of that has to do with protecting the interests of the child. The person now that is appointed as guardian, they have the right to come and get those particular documents. Now, as we said before, a minor cannot have parental authority or guardianship of another minor. One of the things that we get in contact with within our office is we have to register births, which actually is the kind of, you can say, this is the foundational um, function of our department. But we could get situations where the mother of that, of that newborn child is a minor. So now, if that child is a minor, we have the responsibility of making a, the proper contacts to the necessary um, departments or institutions that will have to deal with this um, type of case, namely the, once again, the Court of Guardianship and if that child is younger than 15, 15 years or younger, then we also will have to include the prosecutor in that because there could be um, an incident of where a child is being abused. So we take 
our job very seriously uh, when we carry out our functions because these type of situations mean that they could have, you could have a minor child that is in some serious trouble. And we also have to be discreet in the way that we handle our business. Because sometimes you have to get information to make up your report, but then you, we also have to be responsible to keep that information confidential. But we are one of those lines that you probably wouldn't think about. <laughs> um, where the protection of the child begins in earnest. Now one of the problems that we do have at time is that sometimes someone is appointed as the guardian of the child and the person that is appointed guardian sometimes they forget to come by our department to let us know what the situation really is. Sometimes we do get the information directly from the courthouse or from the court of guardianship, not, not always. The person that is um, declared as the guardian, they have that responsibility to let us know what the situation is so that we can update our files properly. And um, once we get the information and we update our files properly, we can then in a improved manner really assist the different departments that are there to really carry out the function of directly protecting the children in our community. But then the community also have to um, realize that they have the responsibility to report stuff. They have the responsibility to make sure that certain things are supposed to be registered. So it's a two-way street. We can help you, but you have to help us help you too. Child abuse is a very sad thing that goes on in different communities. Now with our department, now we don't really see that many um, birds of children of mothers that are younger than 15, let's say for the last 10 years, you probably get maybe like one a year in that ratio. You can say average of one and a half a year. But one and a half is still too much. So, children, You have to speak up when you get an opportunity. You gotta let someone know, because then you will be helped. We do have, we do have um, ways and means of helping within the government, and um, even our laws is set up in a way to protect. The Court of Guardianship is uh, the agency that government has because every country, based on the Convention of the Rights of the Child, have to make sure that you have an uh, organization where uh, we can secure that children are protected, as Mr. Bell indicated. Actually, your parents are responsible for you. But not all parents take up that responsibility and duty to do what is in the best interest of their children. And so the government has to put an institution in place organization that is there to monitor that your best interest uh, is served and so you have a court of guardianship is the child protection and the youth rehabilitation which means also when you get in trouble with the law and you're between 12 and 18 years old from the moment the police picks you up they report it to us and within 24 hours we have to come and visit you and see what is your background not what crime you committed exactly because that is what the police is going to investigate but we investigate who's your mother who's your father which environment are you growing up? Which school are you going to? How are you doing in school? Those kind of things. Okay, so then you know something about the Court of Guardianship. The team in general this year for St. Martin is Strong Families Nurture Strong Society. And it's good that we repeat it because it's important that you understand what it means. So I think uh, I would like you to also repeat I deserve to be safe. 
and say it as you mean it because it, it is a, it's a serious thing. I deserve to be safe. I deserve to be protected. I deserve a, f a strong family. I deserve a strong society. And this one, listen first to what you're going to say and say it if you, only if you mean it. I will do my part to achieve this. Okay? Because you can say at the one hand that you deserve to be safe, but you have to believe it. It, it is not good for you to be walking around and taking in a society, not only in your own family setting, but also at school or when you're walking in the street, that you cannot be safe. And that if, you th if you're thinking about all the things that are happening on, uh, internationally, that there are terrorists out there, uh, that there are bomb threats taking place on St. Martin, right here on St. Martin, and that you might feel as an as a individual, as a human being, it makes you feel unsafe, true or not? 